Hey guys, welcome back to Election Center. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the presidential debate from last night. This was the second and final presidential debate between Republican incumbent Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden. So I'm going to basically be just going over what went down and maybe uh, try to come to some sort of a final opinion as to who won but basically we're just going to be talking about my takes on the debate and by the way i'd love to hear your guys's takes in the comments in terms of what you thought of the debate but i want to kick off the video here by showing you guys this post debate poll as to who won uh now it is from cnn so they tend to be favorable to the democrats in their polling data uh so they're a biased pollster in my opinion from what i've seen but they basically say that 53% of voters who watched the debate said Biden won, while 39% said Trump won. So maybe if we adjust for bias, it would be a bit closer. That margin right there, that's a 14-point margin. Uh, so I'm guessing maybe it was more like 8 or 9-point margin uh, in terms of how voters split in terms of who they thought won the debate. Uh, so yeah, it, may, it looks like maybe the public slightly thought that biden won the debate but it more or less seems to be probably split along party lines in a way and i don't really think that uh the people who thought biden won uh are probably gonna leave trump for biden uh this is not necessarily gonna change any minds uh i for now what i my first feeling off the debate uh was sort of just like, I don't really know who won. Uh, you know, I thought it was kind of a draw at the time. I've got the video loaded up here. But yeah, um, a pattern I noticed in the debate was that it was basically trade-off, trading attacks. Now, let me explain. Uh, say Biden would attack Trump. Uh, well, Trump would respond to that attack by sort of briefly trying to address Biden, what Biden said, and then immediately turning the tables and accusing Biden of a similar thing. So uh, the responses to the attacks by on both sides was basically uh, turning the tables. So, so, you know, Biden brings up Wall Street, in, in, I think it was in some way trying to attack Trump uh, relating to Wall Street. Trump's response, he's like, okay, I need to respond to this. Then he says, no, Biden's the one taking money from Wall Street. Uh, and, you know, it happened with all that stuff with Burisma, Ukraine, foreign money, foreign corruption. Uh, I'm sure if I just unpause the video here, I'd find an example. But Trump accusing Biden of corruption uh, or hiding stuff, you know, uh, with with the, these new things talk, being talked about surrounding Joe Biden. Uh then Biden's response to bring up Trump's tax returns. So this is a pattern I noticed, basically, in the presidential debate. And a thought I had was that may, this might just end up dampening voter turnout because it might have this debate may have served to just uh, make the voters further dislike both of these candidates and further just uh, be pushed away, uh, you know, uh, voters might be, uh, you know, less happy with Donald Trump, less motivated to vote for him because, you know, so many, so many sort of scandals or accusations were brought up, uh, in this debate that, you know, could serve to taint, uh, their image or just so many sort of questions, you know, not a lot of them necessarily got the most satisfactory answers. So this could just hurt to, uh, you know, make both candidates more viewed more unfavorably you know uh just dampen voter turnout just like so many questions so many accusations just like the voters might be thinking geez i don't really want to vote for either of these people there's so many shady accusations of corruption foreign money so that's a thought i had is that maybe this will just increase sort of the unfavorability ratings of both candidates dampen voter enthusiasm or turnout, but I think it's more likely that if you're a Joe Biden supporter, you're not going to believe the accusations that are made against Joe Biden. If you're a Trump supporter, uh, you're not going to believe the accusations made against Trump because, uh, you know, basically Joe Biden denied flatly the, his accusations, Trump denied flatly his accusations. 
and then they all made accusations, both they made accusations of their own. So, uh, you know, another thought I had was that this could possibly hurt Joe Biden because maybe it'll taint his image as a harmless moderate. You know, that's my term for it, harmless moderate. Uh, because, God, remember, a lot of people don't really support Joe Biden because they love him or are super enthusiastic about him. They love Joe Biden. No, they support him because they don't really mind him because he's a fine enough alternative to Donald Trump. Uh, you know, just harmless and offensive, uh, not not too extreme, just a moderate candidate, hasn't had many major uh, scandals, I guess, but this could possibly taint that image with all the back and forth about foreign money. Joe Biden's certainly in the thick of it uh, in terms of getting accusations and questions about this stuff, so uh, this could make people possibly second guess. Uh, Joe Biden's innocence, if you know what I mean. But yeah, you know, just so much back and forth with the foreign money, uh, corruption and whatnot. Now, obviously, this time around, there was that mute button. So less interrupting. Uh, yeah, definitely less interrupting. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously no post-debate polls yet. Uh, when they release polls, you know, if they release a poll today, it's not necessarily going to be taking into account the effects of the debate because... I notice when the poll is conducted, it's released a bit after that, so we're going to have to wait a bit. But, uh, yeah, I really, obviously don't really feel like this is going to change many minds, but um, both candidates held their own in this debate, I think. Uh, they, you know, both got in some good attacks, good talking points. I thought that Trump was able to get in some good attacks uh, some stuff that I remembered sticking out was the immigration portion of the debate, uh, sort of getting Biden to confess to shortcomings on immigration, uh, the 1994 crime bill, Biden had to sort of say it was a mistake, uh, and then Trump with his 47 years versus 47 months line, so this stuff was positive for Trump, I'm not sure really if it's going to help him in the polls though, but just like sort of thinking about Moments that were good for Trump in the debate. That was stuff I thought of. And then Biden, uh, of course, hammering away on uh, just the, the pandemic in general. You know, the spread of COVID-19. Uh, the, the, these are things that could have been positive for him. I generally thought that Biden did better than he did last time. And I can't quite remember s too many specific examples. But my general feeling was that Biden... Uh, made some good talking points in terms of uh, positive moments for him in the debate, and he had some good talking points. Uh, I, if I rewatched the debate, I could probably name some more specific examples, but uh, they both had decent performances, in my opinion. Uh, so whereas last time, if you had a fence between a good performance and a bad performance, last time I thought they sort of more fell on the bad end, both of them. Uh, where they both, in terms of where the line is, fell on the spec end of the spectrum where they had a bad performance. This time I felt like they leaned more towards the positive end of the spectrum in terms of their performance. But this could also have hurt, served just to hurt both of them because they both have got caught in, that, in the back and forth attacks, which will... Because, you know, when you're attacking someone, you're meant to harm that candidate's chances, uh, go into that candidate's support... Uh, make people not want to support that candidate when they're both attacking each other so much they're harming each other and you know even if they try to respond to the attacks they'll still sort of be lingering in the people's mind i feel like possibly but anyway let's talk about the polls 52.1 percent biden on this 538 polling average 42.3 percent for donald trump so that's 52 42 basically uh, so that leaves 6% in the other, or sorry, 52, 42. Yeah, that leaves 6% in the other slash undecided. So that's really 3% undecided right now is what I think. So let's think about that. 3% undecided. I feel like if you're undecided right now, it's really going to depend on whether you're more of a conservative or more of a liberal. I feel like if you're more of a conservative voter... If you lean more on the conservative end of the spectrum, you're going to opt for Donald Trump. Now, it seems kind of obvious that I'm saying that, but, you know, Donald Trump's talking points and really being fervently anti-left, if you know what I mean, uh, and really 
you know, being pro all these very conservative positions and really just being a staunch backer of these conservative positions, I feel like that's going to help him win these undecided voters who are on the conservative end of the spectrum. They're going to opt for Donald Trump. And if you're a liberal, more of the liberal on the, on the liberal end of the spectrum, I feel like uh, you're going to opt for Joe Biden. It seems obvious, but that's what I think. Uh, you know, you'll be thinking maybe just because of the circumstances of the pandemic, you know, that's going to go against the incumbent. But when it comes to these remaining undecided voters, Trump has been able to disrupt some of that split towards Biden, I feel like. You know, if Trump uh, wasn't, uh, you know, as good with this rhetoric uh, about these conservative positions and, you know, wasn't quite as good with the rhetoric, you know, maybe the split would be bigger towards Biden just because Trump's the incumbent during the pandemic. But yeah, uh, these remaining undecided voters probably just going to split both ways, not affect the margin too much. Maybe a bit more of a split towards Biden just because of the current circumstances. But yeah, uh, Biden's got this 9.8 margin right now. Uh, obviously, the race is sort of naturally tightening from this huge 10 or 11 point margin that he had. By the time we get to election day, it'll be a nine or eight point lead, right? Probably nine points is what I'm thinking. You know, he could he could easily win the popular vote by eight points. Uh, that's sort of what I was thinking uh, a little while back, an eight point margin of victory. Uh, now, something I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Trump recovering from COVID, coming out swinging, coming out with these rallies, coming out swinging, full of energy, right? That could help his image. Because people know, okay, this guy had COVID and now he's back swinging. Makes him look stronger, healthier, uh, just good for his image. See if that has any impact. But, uh, yeah. Trump winning the enthusiasm game, obviously. But Biden's got this 9.8 lead in this average here. So, if I had to make a final consensus in terms of who won this presidential debate... I, I, you know, one minute I could think Biden, one minute I could think Trump. Last time, all things being said and done, ultimately I'd give that debate to Biden, the first presidential debate, just because Trump interrupted so much, so much more. Uh, now, there was interrupting from both sides for sure, but Trump just could not hold back, and it just like was like, you know, you just wanted to say, settle down, man. <laughs> so ultimately... Biden won the first debate. This debate was more or less a draw. Maybe I could give it tilt to Trump because Trump's talking points. Uh, just very clean cut, smooth. Uh, whenever he got attacked, he was able to put up a decent response, actually. But, yeah, Trump, I thought, uh, you know, I'm not saying I support Trump or I'm against Trump, but I thought he was pretty straight and to the point in this debate. And he had those talking points ready. Uh, all of those talking points. Last In the first debate, he tried to say everything at once. It didn't really work. You know, in in one answer, he'd be, his main point would be about how Biden uh, won't say the words law and order. Then in the same thing, he'd be add a little aside about how he wants, his party wants socialist med socialized medicine. Trump had all these asides and tangents. This debate, he was able to sort of keep the answers more concise, not go on all these little asides and tangents, not say everything at once. That was a plus for him. And Biden, uh, obviously, had a decent performance. You know, he also had uh, fairly concise talking points about the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if this is just because Donald Trump's so much more of an iconic, I guess, entertaining type person. I'm remembering more specific examples from Trump than I am from Biden. Uh, I guess because Trump's just so, uh, so much, you know, he, Trump really grabs your attention. Biden, uh, you know, this is not knocking Biden, but, uh, Biden, Biden's, <laughs> Biden's more, uh, I guess normal, <laughs> you could say, but, um, yeah, uh, s decent performances from both of them. You could also spin this though to be that both of them had not the best performances, but, you could you could spin this different million different ways. It just depends on how you perceive this debate. Uh, I ultimately thought both of them had you know decent talking points. You know I'm not saying they were quote unquote good or bad, but in terms of uh, debating debate tactics, 
Both of them had decent performances. And I honestly think it was essentially a draw because this will have little movement in the polls. So, yeah, this is sort of just my thoughts. I'm just recording this video real quick. Uh, just to, just to uh, speak my mind to you guys about what I thought the debate, what I thought about the debate. Sort of my general take just, you know, it was only hours ago because it was last night. I'm recording this in the afternoon. But yeah, you know, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Your take on the debate, who you thought won, Biden or Trump. Definitely talking points uh, for both points of view. It's all about how you perceive this debate, really. What things you were paying attention to most when you watched. Uh, you know, maybe things that I wasn't really thinking about at the time. If I thought closer about those factors, my opinion would change. My perception would change. But, uh, yeah, definitely interested in hearing your guys' thoughts on the debate. And so, yeah, definitely pop a comment down below. I'll, I'll respond. We can have a little conversation in the comments about the debate. But, yeah, that's a wrap on this video. And so, you know, if you like this type of content I make here on this channel uh, about, uh, you know, election analysis, definitely subscribe to my channel because my videos are going to be right up your alley. Uh, so more videos like this and the other videos on my channel. Uh, where I, you know, fill in electoral maps, look at the polls, look at historical elections. Uh, so yeah, all things elections and ex election analysis. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you're into this sort of thing, election analysis. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and thought it was interesting. And I'll see you in the next Election Center video. Bye, guys.